from Racine. I was born in Racine. I was born in a house on uh, Romaine Avenue. I think it was 2420 Romaine Avenue or something. 1930. And uh, I lived in Racine my whole life. And I moved out into the country just before the war started. And I spent the whole war years out in the country. And I loved it out here. And it's not too far from where I live right now. And then I, but I was always thinking around with art stuff, drawing. I was painting uh, kids' clothes, Donald Duck and Mickey Mouse is under jackets. And uh, I had no idea what I was doing, but I paint. I just painted them for three bucks a piece. That and was big money back that then. Was, oh, that was tremendous. And. Uh, then finally, one day, my dad bought me some pastels and uh, some uh, pastel paper, which he got. It was like sandpaper, but it was pastel paper. And I started drawing. And then I wanted to paint with paint. And I stretched a piece of old sheet, and nothing worked out because there was no gesso on it or nothing. And it was a mess. I was just so despondent with it. And then my dad told me, well, here's what you got to have. And then I went and bought some canvas and some paints. And he took me over to an artist friend of his to uh, critique my work. And the guy was very nice. His house was like this house is now full of paintings. He was also a cello teacher, my dad's cello teacher. And he repaired violins and cellos. That's what he did for a living. Never had a job. <coughs> and he told me about my work. He said, this and do this and do that. Well, then I, I talked to another artist and he told him just the opposite. Then I found out that almost anything goes. Whatever you're comfortable with, whether the work is good or bad, means no difference at all. If you like it, that's fine. It's good artwork. So I never uh, put down Picasso or any of the guys that are, that are um, far out artists, Jackson Pollock. I think they're fine too. Their work is gorgeous too, as far as I'm concerned. If you like it, that's what you want to get. And uh, if my stuff sometimes it used to be junk, and I fed on no good. And my dad would laugh at me about that. I don't do that anymore. I stick with a paint until I get it done, regardless of how long it takes. Because I, what else am I going to do? You know. I, and I worked as an artist for 40 years, commercial artist. I freelanced for about seven or eight of that on my own. It used to mean when you freelance, you meant you were broke, and that's probably most of the time what it was. But I always made a living at it, so, and I loved it. I still love it. And my wife is a good art director. She told me I did a painting, a commission of a, a painting for a pastor who was retiring. And he wanted a picture of a rock with the ocean. So I made a picture of a rock as representing Christ with all oh, the worst storm you ever saw in your life. And when I got all done, I had a week to go. I said, oh, I'm done. And she says, it'll never fly. <laughs> she said, you know how their personalities are? They're so quiet people. They won't like it. You know? I had to do it all over. Oh, yeah. And I did. I was glad I did. She was so right. And I was happy I did. They were really thrilled. I see him every now and then. He said, I've got it hanging in my bedroom. So. But that's in my paint every day. That's all I do. And I was cartooning for a long time for uh, Friends of Seniors. I did their little newspaper cartoons. And uh, I used to submit cartoons in magazines. Never did any good. But it was still fun to do. Which companies did you work for? I worked for Case Company and Maxie Ferguson, all in the art departments. And then I worked at Eisenberg Studio in Milwaukee. And I freelanced for a few years. And I worked for George Deccan Studio in Racine. And so I was always doing artwork. And then one year I quit. I said, I've had it, no more artwork. And I went and worked in a foundry at, at uh, Harris Meadow. I loved it. And it had a good job there. It was a nice job. I got to work with the with the scientist guys, the chemists and stuff. So it was a nice job. But one year of that, and then I went back there. Again, mm -hmm. there. It was fun. So how long have you been doing the actual paintings for yourself, like we're looking at today? Oh, 40 years. 40? <laughs> but, I mean, but I mean, really, when I, I lost my job in 1990, and uh, they retired a bunch of us off. And uh, so I freelanced for three years doing commercial art for them and cases and whoever get their work from. Japan, a lot of work from Japan. And that petered out and then and, uh, the work died off 
And then I got a phone call from somebody from Case Company someplace. They had a new engine they were making. They wanted me to illustrate it. And I said, eh, I'll get back to you on that. And I told Gina, I said, I really don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, don't. And I didn't. I called her back up, and I said, nope. And I haven't done any commercial work since. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Don't and blame me. And I just paint all the time. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a blessing. I just look. God works so nice when I work on a painting. When I run into problems, I pray about it. And, and I said, my land, you must be really a super artist because you can get things going for me in a hurry. It's just wonderful how he does that. I, I spend a lot of time time with the Lord, so and I love it. Yeah, you sure do. Now, when you worked for Case, and you were illustrating their tractors? Tractors, drawing parts. Do you have any of that stuff printed up yes, at all? Yes, I do. Sometime I, I should come out yeah, and take well, some pictures I, I of that. I don't have that. I've got, when I... Uh, my daughter worked at Cases for quite a while, and she brought home a painting of a 1965, 1865 Case steam engine. 1865. And it was one, and I looked, I said, I did that. <gasps> and they had me do it for Elton Bromba, the head uh, engineer there one time when I was working there. He, in color. It and, was and he left it there, huh? Yeah, well, yeah, he did a lot of prints of them, they gave them out. It's very nice. But then when I worked for, for Massey, I did a whole calendar. Oh, did you? Antique tractors. And the, the money was getting so tight that they, they wouldn't buy it off me then. So I still got the drawings. You them. still have oh, the yeah. drawings. I even had a printer, and we told them what we were going to do, how we were going to handle it. And they would come up with the money. So. Well, we'll have to do something with those. The oh, next time I come over, we'll yeah, take some yeah, pictures of that. Out, yeah. They're pencil, but they're really nice. And I remember doing those things. Not, but I don't have all the all the people that knew all the, all about them are gone now. They're all dead. Mm -hmm. And there's one that would tell me about you know, what this did and that did. They're all gone now. Right? Yeah. I guess one of the questions I have for you now, Ron, is about your automobile paintings. I know you did some motorcycles. Now your automobile paintings, and you have quite a few of them. Um, how did you get started in this? Would you always have a love for the automobile? Oh, absolutely. My dad was a mechanic. I was like. And I love cars, I just love cars. And uh, we started going down to uh, McDonald's, the Thursday night car shows. And so I did some paintings of some of the cars that were down there. Okay. And I just loved doing it. So the first one I did was, uh, I did a, no, I take that back. The first time I, I had an idea to make some money on the side, to do something for, a, for car dealerships. So I made, I was gonna carve out, cut out, Card uh, out of out of uh, Mason or something, mm -hmm. and then paint it, and so you'd have a big old time car like this. Oh wow! And so I made a small one. It's just gorgeous. It was a Mercedes uh, uh, Duesenberg. Wow! And it turned out great. My neighbors got in his house, but it was so much work, you know. To, and if I did it bigger, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that was another hair braid idea, I had. <laughs> but fun. But the, the little one turned out beautiful. He's got in his house. I, don't know, I love painting cars. What kind of cars did you have when you were a young guy? Oh, the first white, well, first real car. I had a 1934 Nash. It looked like a gangster car with the, the mounts, the mm -hmm. side mounts, mm -hmm. and suicide doors. It was gorgeous, perfect condition, except it always gave me trouble. It started a fire on me one time. The battery was under the seat. Yeah. <laughs> and then my, when my dad overhauled the car, it was perfect. I loved it. And then I bought a. 39 Chevrolet, which was a real cream puff. Paid more for it than it was new. Paid 695 bucks for it. And the car sold for 500 something brand new. Mm. But it's right after the war, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then I had that. Then I, oh, I finally bought a convertible. Oh, I worked at Powell Chevrolet at the time. And they had a Dr. Schott's wife traded in her car, had 10,000 miles on it. And it was a yellow convertible with a black top. What year? Uh, 1950. Oh, is that right? Wow. And it was so nice. And I had it for, I paid 1400 bucks for it, which was a real deal, because I worked there. They gave me a real good deal. And then 10 weeks, months later, my dad said, you got to sell your car, Ron. I said, why? we got to feed our mink. We were running short of cash flow. I sold, I sold the car. I made 50 bucks on it. I sold it to a, to a car dealer in the scene, and, and he sold it for 1450 That's what he gave me for, 1450 So I made $50. I drove it for 10 months. But then I had no car. And yeah. a beat up old 1936 Chevrolet panel truck. Oh, yeah. All meat in it. It was the coroner's car. 
from Racine. The meat wagon for the corner, oh, and we both oh, meat for our meat. Oh, no. And you go out on a date with a car that you got to hose it out, and it still stinks. Yeah. And fish and everything. Yeah. Oh, it was no fun. Go on so you had a mink ranch then, mink too? Ranch, yeah. Where was that at? Highway 41. <laughs> okay. Highway 41. I ate it every minute. That's the most brutal, yeah. waste of business in the world. Yeah. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Killing horses, killing the mink. And you work like 24 hours a day, it seemed like. And you could never go anywhere. You no know, vacation, nothing. Mm. You stay all the time. What'd you have after your 50 Chevrolet? I had a, a 1947 Chevrolet panel truck. Well, that was the panel truck. Yeah, it okay. was nice. It was nice. But it was, it was old and running out. Boards, really. But it was a panel truck, and I thought that was great. Yeah. Then I, then I, well, then I bought myself a Model 8 for it. That was my favorite car of all time. I painted, I was at that when I was going to school, and I painted up uh, cartoon characters on the doors and the quarter panels, and I saw a guy with an Auburn in town here, and I painted a car just like that with a red hood, you know, oh, it was just gorgeous. I loved that car. But then I sold it for 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. I was going to go to the state fair with a neighbor kid, Truck driver stopped by and says, Hey, kid, we offer me a car. He says, I don't give me 50 bucks. Three, so take it. I said, I don't know what the title is. Don't eat it. I said, Yes, you do. He said, No, I'm going to use it to herd horses, wild horses, and meat farmers. <laughs> so he put it on the back of his truck. Took off. Right? Give me $50. I told my dad, My dad said, God, God's got rid of that piece of junk. And I felt really bad. Then I bought a motorcycle. <laughs> yeah, what, is, what kind of motorcycle did you get? A little Harley. A little, what, I think it was a 145 or one. Right after the war, you could get a check eye, which was from Czechoslovakia, a little, real cute little thing, and then a little Harley one. Uh, is that a 145? No, but 45, I can't remember, but it's small. Two, uh, two cycle. Mm -hmm. And a cute little thing. I wish they saw that. And then I bought a service cycle. Oh. Which was really nice little thing, and it was, uh, I paid 265 bucks for it. I saw a guy in the parade one day, like that, downtown. I started crying. I wanted that thing back so bad. Oh, that's right. Cute little thing.